Good day, everyone. My respect to our professor, Ma'am Nerissa M. Beatrice, and to you, my dear virtual classmates, a pleasant day. So our topic is about measures of central tendency. So the mean, median, mode, and the percentile. So, and we are the discussions for this topic. First one is yours truly. I am Rosalie B. Elorde, a secondary school teacher from Goa National High School, Goa District. We also have Rogelio P. Delfino from Pinaglabanan Elementary School, Goa District. We also have Salvador P. Sadia from Goa National High School, Goa District, and Vicenta Marilu Arpadillo, also from Goa National High School, Goa District. So each of us have a different topic to be tackled. So now let's proceed to my topic. So let's first identify what is measures of central tendency. So measures of central ten tendency provides a very convenient way of describing a set of scores with a single number that describes the performance of the group. So it is also defines as a single value that is used to describe the center of the data. So there are three commonly used measures of central tendency. So these are the following. We have the mean, the median, and the mode. So those are the three commonly measures of central tendency. So what is mean? So mean, it, it is the commonly used measure of the center of data. So according to Garrett, the arithmetic mean, or more simply the mean, is the sum of the separate scores or measures divided by their number. So it is also referred as the arithmetic average. So we come now to how to calculate mean for grouped data. So we will use this formula. So mean is equals to the summation of fx over n. So what are these formula means? So x bar is the symbol for mean. x is the midpoint of the class interval. F is the frequency of the class interval and N is the total frequency. So let's try to apply the formula of mean for grouped data in answering this question or problem. So calculate the mean score of 60 students in mathematics. So, we will calculate the mean score by uh, given the frequency table. So, this is the frequency table. So, the first column is the class interval. So, we have 26 to 30, 21 to 25, 16 to 20, 11 to 15, 6 to 10, and 1 to so those are the class interval. So on the second column, so we have the frequency. So given the frequency 5, 11, 15, 9, 13, and 7. So that is the second column. So for the third column, we have the midpoint x. And the last column is the fx. So what is the first step to get the mean score of the 60 students? 
So first, we will we will get the total uh, frequency. So the total number of frequency is 60. So we will add the 5, 11, 15, 9, 13, and 7. So the total of that is uh, 60. So next is the midpoint or x. So how we can get the midpoint or the x? So yan yung gitna ng class interval. So for example, the first class interval, we have the 26 to 30. So ang gitna niyan is 28. So 26 to 30. Ang midpoint niya is 28. So, 21 to 25. Next. So, the midpoint of that is 23. Next. 16 to 20. Ang midpoint niya is 18. Next. 11 to 15. The midpoint is 13. 6 to 10. The midpoint is 8. And 1 to 5. The midpoint is Three. So next, after na after na fill up natin or makuha natin yung midpoint x, so we will now now get the fx. So what is fx? So that is the uh, frequency times x. So imo multiply natin yung uh, 28, ay uh, yung 5, yung frequency, multiply natin sa x or the midpoint. So, 5 times 28, so that is 140. So, next, 11 times 23, we have 253. 15 times 18, we have 270. 9 to 13, we have 117. 13 times 8, we have 104. And 7 times 3, we have 21. So, ito total natin yung summation of fx. So, the total is 900. Five. So, i-add natin yung 140 plus 253 plus 270 plus 117 plus 104 plus 21. The total is 905. So, that is the summation of Fx. So now uh, we will get the mean. So by using this formula, the mean is equals to summation of x over n. So summation of x is equals to 905 divided by the the frequency, the total frequency or the n, it is 60. So, 905 divided by 60. So, the mean is 15.08. So, the mean score is 15.08. So, analysis, the mean performance of 60 students in Mathematics 7 is 15.08. So, those students who got scores below 15.08 did not perform well in the said examination. So, while those students who got scores above 15.08 performed well. So, what are the properties of the mean? So, the first properties of the mean is it measures 
is stability. So mean is the most stable among other measures of central tendency because every score contributes to the value of the mean. So next, the sum of each score's distance from the mean is 0. So that is another property. So it may easily affected by the extreme scores. So it can also be applied to interval level of measurement. So that is another properties of the mean. So it may not be an actual score in the distribution. It is very easy to compute. So those are the properties of the mean. So what are the advantage of the mean? So the first one, so it utilizes all the items in a group. So another, it is widely understood and easy to calculate. So that is an advantage of the mean. The third one, it can be known even when number of items and their aggregate values are known, but details of the different items are not available. So number four, it is always definite. And number five, it is capable of further algebraic treatment. Number six, it is less subject to chance variations. Hence, it is more stable measure of central tendency. So those are the different advantages of the mean. So what are the limitations of the mean? So number one, it may not be an actual item in a series. Number two, it cannot be computed by merely observing the series unless the series is very simple. So number three, it is essential to know the actual values of all the items before computing the arithmetic mean. But in the case of median and mode, the items on the extreme may be ignored without understanding the values of these measurements. And number four, if the number of items in a series is very small, the mean is unduly affected by the extreme items. So those are the limitations of the mean. So when to use the mean? So it is used when sampling stability is desired. So other measures are to be computed such as standard deviation, coefficient of variation, and skewness. Then, when the scores are distributed symmetrically around a central point, when the distribution is not badly skewed. And the next one, a mean is used when the most accurate measure of the central tendency is desired. When other statistics like uh, standard deviations and coefficient of correlation are to be computed later. So many statistics are based upon the mean. So those are, uh, that's all about the mean. So thank you for watching and for listening. Numbers are the highest degree of knowledge. It is the knowledge itself. From our Greek philosopher, Plato. My respect to our dynamic professor, Ma'am Nerissa Beatrice. To my virtual classmates, a pleasant day. I'm Relio P. Delpino. We'll discuss one of the important measurements 
of central tendency, which is the median. Kugel defines median as the middle number in an assorted ascending or descending list of numbers, and it can be more descriptive of that data set than the average. It is the point above and below which up or the 50% the observed data falls and so present the midpoint of the date. It is also a value in a series arrangement from a smallest to a largest below and above which there are an equal number of values or which is the average of the two middle values if there is no one middle number. It also a value in an ordered set of values below and above which there is an equal number of values or which is the arithmetic mean of the two middle values if there is no one middle number. And the last one, it denotes or relates to a value or quantity lying at the midpoint of a frequency distribution of observed values or quantities such that there is an equal probability of falling above or below it. Example, in this given series of number 7, 9, 2, 5, and 6. In order to find the median, we have to arrange the number from the highest to lowest, which is 9, 7, 6, 5, and 2. The bundle number of the given series of number is 6. So, the median is 6. Another example. 7, 4, 9, 6, 6, and 8. Just like what we did in the first example, we arranged the number from the highest to lowest. So the order of the numbers are 9, 8, 7, 6, 6, and 4. Notice that we have two middle numbers, which are 7 and 6. How do we find the median? Or what is the median of this given series of numbers? Because we have two middle numbers, we have to find the mean of these two middle numbers. And so, the medium will be 7 plus 6 all over 2. That is equal to 13 over 2. And 13 over 2 is equal to 6.2. Five. So therefore, the median is 6.5. For group data, we will have a formula to follow in order to find the median. Median is equal to LL plus the quantity of N over 2 minus CF all over F times I where LL is the lower limit, small CF is the cumulative frequency, small letter F is the frequency of the class interval, big letter N is the total number of frequency, and I is the size of class interval. For clear and comprehensive explanation of computing matching, Please watch this video clip from Google. Stay focused. Given the frequency table. So again, the class interval. First column, second column is frequency. So, this time, ang pipil up naman po natin sa third column is the lower limit or the lower boundary. And the fourth column is CF or the cumulative frequency. So, Ano po yung unang step to calculate the median of 60 students? First po ay, kunin po natin yung size of class interval or I. So yung I po natin dyan is equal to 5. Bakit po 5? 
Yan po yung bilang ng class interval. So, so yung una po, 1 to 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, there are 5 numbers in a class interval, kaya i is equal to 5. So, next po, itotal po natin yung frequency. Total po niyan ay 60. So, yung n po is equal to 60. n is the total frequency. And then, next column po is the lower limit or lower boundary. So, paano po kinukuha yung lower limit or boundary? So, iyan po ay yung pagitan ng dalawang class interval. Ano po? Okay. So, yung 26 to 30, ang kasunod po pababa ay 21 to 25. So, ano po yung pagitan ng 25 at yung 26? Ano po? So, yung pagitan po nila ay 25.5. Yun po yung lower limit ng 26 to 30 or lower boundary. Ano po? So, boundary means pagitan. And then, next, 21 to 25, ang kasunod po niya ay 16 to 20. So, ang pagitan po nila ay yung 20 to 21. So, that is 20.5. Ganun po, pababa ang pag-fill up po natin sa lower limit or lower boundary. So, yung 16 to 20 ay 15.5. 11 to 15 is 10.5. 6 to 10 is 5.5. And 1 to 5. Since wala na po sa waba niyan, magbawas ka lang po ng 0.5, kaya 0 0.5. Okay. So, next po, calculate po natin yung CF or cumulative frequency. So, paano po tayo mag-start? Mag-start po tayo dito sa N is equal to 60, yung total frequency. Yun po yung ilalagay natin sa unang row. Ano po? Ayan, sa unang class interval. So, yung 60 po na iyan, Ano pong gagawin natin para fill up po, pababa? Isusubtract lang po natin yan sa frequency. So, 60 minus 5 is equal to 55. Ano po? Yung 55 po ilalagay po natin sa kasunod niya. Ano po? Naro. Gone po ang gagawin natin, pababa. So, 55 minus 11 is 44. 44 minus 15 is 29. 29 minus 9 is 20. 20 minus 13 is 7. So, dapat ang end po niya, ay 0. So, 7 minus 7 is 0. So, ibig sabihin, tama po yung ating pag-subtract. So, pag hindi po nag-equal yung nasa last row, ibig sabihin, mali po yung pag-subtract natin. Ano po? Then, after that, ano po yung next natin? Kakalculate na po natin yung median score using the formula. Ano po? So, sa formula, kailangan po natin makuha yung given. Ano po yung uh, LL po dyan, or the lower limit. And then, kailangan po natin makuha yung frequency, yung cumulative frequency. So, yung I, nakita na po natin dyan, na-identify na po natin, which is equal to 5. And then, yung N po, which is equal to 60. So, ang ating pong hahanapin sa table ay yung lower limit or lower boundary, frequency F, cumulative frequency CF. Ano po? Okay, so, first, Step na gagawin po natin ay simplify po natin yung n over 2. So, ano pong ibig sabihin ng n over 2? Yan. Yung n po dyan, yun po yung total score or uh, total frequency rather. So, ang n po natin dyan ay 60 over 2. So, 60 divided by 2, that is equal to 30. So, mula po dyan sa 30 na yan, punta po tayo sa table at tignan po natin yung column under Cumulative frequency. Doon po natin ilalagay yung 30 na yan. So, yung 30 po ay nasa pagitan ng 29 to 44. So, ngayon, saan po natin kukunin yung mga given na yan? So, kapag ganyan po na nasa gitna po yung dalawa, ang kukuhanan ko natin ay dito sa taas niya. Sibig sabihin, nandito po yung kakailangan natin sa formula. Ano po? So, yung ating pong LL dyan or lower boundary, that is 15.5. Lagay po natin. Lower limit, 15.5. Next po, ang ating pong frequency, F, is equal to 15. And then next, yung ating pong cumulative frequency, that is 29. So, bakit po 29 yung ating pong cumulative frequency na kinuha? Okay, so, yun po yung rule ng median for group data. Ano po? So, yung cumulative frequency dyan ay hindi yung mismong nandun sa class interval. 
doon po sa baba na cumulative frequency. Sa baba po niya. So, ang kasunod po ng 44 ay 29, kaya 29 po yung ating kinuha na cumulative frequency. Okay, so after po natin ma-identify yung mga given, calculate na po natin yung median score using the formula. So, MD is equal to, ang LL po natin dyan ay 15.5. Ito po yun. Plus, yung N over 2 po natin dyan ay, yan po, 30. Minus, CF po natin dyan, 29. All over, yung frequency F, yan po, 15. Times, yung I po natin, or the class size, that is equal to 5. So, after po natin na ma-substitute lahat po ng given, ay simplify na po natin. Ang una po ang simplify dyan ay yung 30 minus 29, that is equal to 1 over 15, then times 5. So, 15 times 5 plus, pwede pong i-divide yung 1 divided by 15, or times 5, or pwede naman pong unahin 1 times 5 divided by 15. Pareho lang po yan. So, dito po ang ginawa ko, dinivide ko po muna. 1 divided by 15 is 0 0.07 times 5. And then next, so, gagawin lang po dyan, multiply po 0 0.07 times 5, then pa-plus po sa 15.5. So, ang magiging sagot po dyan is 15.8. So, yung MD or the median score of 60 students, yan po ay 15.8. So, this means that one half of the students scored above 15.8 and the other half scored below 15.8. Bakit po ganun po yung interpretation niya? Kasi po median, iyan po yung gitna ng group data. Thank you for watching. I am Salvador Sadia of 4th District of Camarines Sur. Our main topic is all about central tendency. And the task given to me is about the mode. The mode or the model score is a score of scores that occurred most in the distribution. It is classified as unimodal, bimodal, trimodal, and multimodal. Unimodal is a distribution of scores that consists of only one mode. Bimodal is a distribution of scores that consists of two modes. Trimodal is a distribution of scores that consists of three modes or multimodal. It is it is a distribution of scores that consists of more than two modes. Example, scores of 10 students in a section A, section B, and section C. Scores of section A, 22, 24, 24, 20, 20, 20, 16, 12, 10, and 7. Scores of section B, 25, 24, 24, 20, 18, 18, 17, 10, 9, and 7. And the scores of section C is 25, 25, 25, 22, 21, 21, 21, 18, 18, and 18. The score that appeared most in section A is 20. Hence, the mode of section A is 20. There is only one mode. Therefore, score distribution is called unimodal. The modes of section B are 18 and 24. Since both 18 and 24 appeared twice, there are two modes in section B. Hence, the distribution is a bimodal distribution. The modes of section C are 18, 21, and 25. There are three modes for section C Therefore, it is called as trimodal or multimodal distribution. The modes of group data. Mode is equal to LL plus D sub 1, D over D sub 2 plus D sub, D sub 1 plus D sub 2 times I. LL is the lower limit of the model class. D sub 1 is the difference between the frequency of the model class and that of the frequency above the model class. The D sub 2 is the difference between the frequency of the model class and that 
of the frequency below the model class. And the i is the size of class interval. A pleasant day, everyone, especially to Mam Neri Sabiatris, our professor, and to my virtual classmates in this subject. I am Vicente Amarillo Rosales Padilla, teacher one of Goa National High School, Goa District. In our group, I am assigned to discuss the person time. What is a person time? A person time is a point on a scale where a certain proportion of the population lies at or below. Example, a score of the 75th percentile means that 75% of the population have scores at or below that value. To say a score 53 in the 75th percentile is to say that 75% of all scores are less than 53. Example, a score of 20 is in the 25th percentile. So 25% of all scores are less than 20. A percentiles are type of a standard score, which means that a row score is converted into a score that has a known or a standard meaning. Usually the standard is comparison to the distribution of scores in a population or comparison to a known range of values. In the case of percentiles, the known range is 0% to 100% and the midpoint is 50%. So with half of the population above and half below. Percentiles can be used to determine where a person's performance or rating lies in relation to the population. There are common percentile divisions because measurements can never be perfect. Ranges of scores and ranges of percentiles are often used to report test results. Since a person's scores vary slightly from test to test, these intervals often provide us with a more fair representation of a person's abilities than an exact percentile score. Two examples of these ranges of percentiles are quartiles and deciles. Here in quartiles, four divisions ranges of 25 percentile units. Quartile, is, quartile 1 is equal to 0 to 25th percentile. Quartile 2 is equal to top of quartile 1 to 50th percentile. Quartile 3 is equal to top of quartile 2 to 75th percentile, while quartile 4 is equal to top of quartile 3 to 100th percentile. Each quartile continues one-fourth or 25% of the scores in the distribution. Decimals. Decimals have 10 divisions, D1 to D10. Similar to quartiles, but progressing by ranges of 10 percentile units, decimal 1 is equal to 0 to 10 percentile. Decimal 2 is equal to top of decimal 1 to 20th percentile, etc. Remember, a quartile of this or decile is a range of percentiles. A specific percentile is equivalent to a single score in a standard form. A quartile rank or decile rank means 
that the person's score lies within a certain quartile or decile. For example, someone with a decile rank of 9 means that their score lies in the 9th decile. Their score is between the 80th and 90th percentile. How do we calculate the percentiles? The ways to calculate the percentiles vary depending on whether you have all the data or only have summaries such as a simple frequency distribution or a group frequency distribution. If you have all the data, create a rank order distribution. Using the rank order distribution for each score, figure out how many scores fall at or below that score. Then, divide the number by the total number of score. Multiply by 100 and round to the nearest whole percent value. That percent value is the percent. Percentile rank. The percentile rank is a score, indicates the percentage of scores in the distribution that fall at or below that score. Thus, for example, to say that the percentile rank of 53 is 75 is to say that 75% of the scores of the exam are less than 50. Example, we have here the data set. We have 75, 80, 85, 90, and 95. So what is the percentile ranking of 85? So the formula of obtaining the percentile ranking is equal to a PR of X is equal to the number of values below X over the number, the total number times 100. Take note that the percentile rank are the ranks, not the score. So, PR of X is equal to the number of values below X over the total number times 100. So, PR of 85 is equal to 2 over 5 times 100. So, the final percentile rank of 85 is 40%. That ends my report. Thank you very much.